valley We do it out in style From the mountain to the ocean When we're to leave her side And it's breakfast with Bob Bon Jovi! Everybody. Day three, Breakfast with Bob. We are brought to you by Hoka Polar, You Can, Velofix, Norma Tech, Active, Canyon Bicycles, Form Goggles, Amp Human. We'll be at Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai, for our championship edition on Sunday. And we are beautiful. Huggles on the Rocks for the 10th year in a row. Our next guest was 11th here last year. This close to being <laughs> top 10. Give it up for Sarah Piampiano. <laughs> so... You could be sitting in a cubicle somewhere, right? Doing financial crap. I could be, you're right. <laughs> 100 hours a week, smoking yeah. cigarettes, mm -hmm. living that lifestyle. Basically, was it a bet that got you in this? So yeah. A coworker who said, I'm going to do a triathlon. You're like, oh, I can do a triathlon. <laughs> Pretty much. That is exactly what happened. We were at a bar. I was smoking a cigarette, and uh, <laughs> we were drinking, and, and we made a bet as to who could beat the other in a, an Olympic distance race triathlon. And... I went and did it. And did you win? Did you beat, win I the bet? I won. I won, yeah. And so did you figure, okay, I won the bet, I'm done, or was it, oh, I sort of like this? No, I mean, I did that race, and I just, it was like a life-changing moment for me. I stopped smoking on the spot. I went out and bought a bike, like, literally that next day or that next week. What, did you borrow a bike for it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I good. did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I borrowed my brother's bike that he had bought in France, like, 20 years earlier when yeah. he was on his honeymoon, so it was kind of old and decrepit but um yeah it it really inspired me and i i just immediately fell in love with the sport and um wanted to just do more of it i didn't really have any goals of right. becoming a pro or any of that know, anything stuff. like that and then after i did my second one um i won that race over overall. which race was that it was a, called the miami nice triathlon it was olympic distance race yeah. down in miami yeah. and um i don't even know if it still exists or not right. but uh, that is sort of what got my the bee in my bonnet about maybe trying to race professionally. And you call Matt Dixon, one of the right Matt, yeah, one of the best coaches yeah. out there. Yeah. And of course, I'm sure he was really receptive when hey, I'm a former investment banker and I want to be a pro triathlete. I want you to coach me. Well, he turned me down initially. Yeah. Uh, I I mean I kind of researched who all the top coaches were and um, I called him and. He was like, thanks. But thanks, no but thing. no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. And I was like, well, I'm coming out to San Francisco. Maybe we could have a coffee. And we went and sat down. He agreed to have a coffee and we sat down. And he just, he said in that moment, being there in person with me and, and kind of seeing me face to face, he just saw something in my eye and yes. knew that I would be quite dedicated and focused to being the best I could be. And he decided to take me on and see what would happen. And how many years ago was that? We started working together at the end of 2010. Okay. Yeah, and so it's been a long while. If, is the worst day of triathlon better than the best day of investment banking? Yeah. I. This is, um, it's, I. as you said, I mean, the worst day, I mean, there are never, there are some days that aren't always great, but I look around regularly and think to myself how lucky I am, and um, it's a really wonderful job to have. What, when you look back at uh, it, your racing career mm -hmm. is there one race you look back at and say that was the best race i ever had yeah uh earlier this year i went and raced uh ironman brazil and um at the end of last year i was quite burned out i just felt like i was sort of dragging my body through the entire year and i took a huge break i took almost four months off um at, in december starting in december through march and i went into ironman brazil and i had didn't have huge training volume and my, you know, everything was kind of down from last year. And I went out and had the race of my life. I went 840. I was missed the American <laughs> record by like 45 seconds. I ran a 253 marathon. I mean, I just like, I pulled this race out of, I don't even know where. And literally I crossed the finish line. I was like, I think I need to retire right now. Right now. Hey, <laughs> drop the microphone. Yeah, Boom. 840. I'm it done. It was crazy. Um, and that for me is just a race I'll always remember. And, and it kind of, led me into the rest of the season with this really positive attitude and just feeling like everything that I accomplished from here on out is kind of like icing on the cake because I, I really had the day that where I, I raced up to where I thought I could and raced right. up to my potential, so it was really satisfying. Uh, what is it about this place that's so special for you? Because you've, you've had some good races here. I have had some good races here. I've been seventh twice. Um, I was 11th last year, yep. as you said, which I was actually quite happy with that race, even though I was just out of the top 10. Um, it's, I mean, 
it's just such a cool experience. Everybody that's here knows, I mean, you land on the island and there's just this crazy energy. I think my heart rate went up like 20 beats when I got off the plane. <laughs> um, you know, it's hot, it's humid, the water's beautiful, but it's still, I mean, you get in and there's just crazy currents and, you know, swells and tides and all this stuff. And I don't know, it just brings this level of racing and and challenge that you don't get anywhere else. So it's it's great. Is it hard? I mean, you're, you, like last year, swam 105. Yeah. Right? And so, <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's awesome. But that yeah. means that you get all this great alone time I on do. the bike, right? <laughs> get to be by, you don't have to worry about all those other dumb cyclists who are by you coming out in 55 yeah. minutes. You get to ride by yourself, that I extra do. bonus, right? <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Yeah, yeah. But no, but that's the hard part is yeah. keeping it together. There's nobody out in the lava fields, right? It's, 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 yeah. It, there's a lot of sensory deprivation. Then you got to get, you get off the bike and you ran sub three, yeah. ran 259. Yeah. Keeping that together and not getting discouraged when you're out of the water, not where you want to be. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think um, it's not really a secret that the swim has been something that I have struggled with my entire career. I get a lot of kind of fan comments regularly saying you really should work on your swim and uh, I'm like, 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 <laughs> I'm like thanks oh, I, th didn't know th that. I didn't know that hey, thanks for that tip <laughs> I'll just get in the pool more than I already am I mean I work really hard to improve it but it just doesn't really seem to be going anywhere but um yeah I mean I think at this point I it used to really discourage me and I yeah. feel really frustrated by it and now I think I've learned to just compartmentalize what the swim is going to be what it's going to be and then I get out of the water and I just start going to work on the bike and the run. And, and although um, I think at, at times it can be frustrating to be so far back and just trying to make my way up, I also think that sometimes it, it proves to my advantage in Kona because I think it does. Um, I'm able to really race my own race versus getting caught up in um, what's going on at the front. And, and I think that's why ultimately you see a lot of people blow up on the run it's because of what happened on the bike um versus i'm able to just really right. execute my race plan well i always felt that was an advantage for rinny yeah because she come out water behind yeah. and just to her own thing didn't get caught up in the racing on the bike people getting out of the saddle <laughs> and because people are not used to being in a race with so many 45 of the greatest women on the planet right right and then people all of a sudden oh my god there's 10 other women around me i got to get away and they do things that are silly yeah rather than you stay steady state and do your own race exactly and um i actually remember listening to a podcast with i don't remember if it was dave, dave scott or mark allen but he was commenting for the men's race that he was surprised that the run times haven't come down but he thinks that's because now it's the same way in the men's field there's just so much jostling and yep. and surges and all this stuff that it just doesn't allow people to get to the run quite as fresh versus in his day people were going at kind of a steady state and i right. think i think i'm the same way i mean i just get on the bike and i put my head down and i really am able to ride quite consistently versus having to have all these surges to try to either stay with a pack or I, I don't know, ride somebody else's race that's not my own. Love it. Well, have a great day out there on Thank Saturday. You. Two sevenths and an eleventh. We see top five coming. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I'll put it out there. I, I've been training hard. I really would like to break the run course record here. Um, really? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it out there on race day. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying it's gonna happen. It's, uh, it's hard to do, and the times are really fast. But it definitely. That race in Brazil, running 253, it gave me the courage to try to go for it. So um, I love it, and I think if it happens, then probably you said like it that here first. Happen. I love it, <laughs> ladies so. and gentlemen. Another round of applause for Sarah Piampiano. Pancho <laughs> man, take us out. Breakfast with Bob. Breakfast with Bob.